Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Harpreet Sareen. I'm a professor of interaction design at Parsons School of Design in New York City. I come from a lineage of work in Google, Microsoft, uh, and museums and research centers in Austria, France, Japan. Um, I will show a range of work here, but then just focus on a couple of things only. Uh, a lot of my research is about, uh, about finding new means of integrating with nature, which starts from questioning the fundamentals. What are the organic alternatives to our technologies? This is an on-plant robot that grows plants into different architectural shapes. How do we design our conservation environments better? This is actually at the San Diego Zoo with an elephant called Mary. Uh, this is a project around choice and control where Mary listens to music when she wants, and she controls this box to listen to music. Apparently, elephants like Austrian music a lot. You know, uh, we can figure that out later why. Sometimes as fundamental as why do trees grow the way they do? And for this last question, I designed a payload that went up in space through this Blue Origin rocket. This is in Van Horn, Texas, a couple of years ago. We get a few minutes of microgravity in this rocket, and during which we grew silver-based wires to study how plants really grow in silent conditions of early evolution. And this is how those, those structures look like. And if you see the image of the plants that you saw and the structures that are grown with inorganic silver here look very similar. I developed robots that are driven by plant signals. Here, what you see is a robot with electrochemical signals attached, electrochemical signals of the plant attached to the robot. When the lights turn on, it induces chemical signals inside the plant, which then triggers the robot. This is a plant driving a robot, not a robot driving a plant. Um, could I get the sound, please? And this is uh, organic electronic materials, wires that grow inside the plants. We were touring the labs here today, and this is kind of in the realm of that work as well. A couple of these works have become startups, one of them based in New Lab in Detroit. But this is basically organic materials, biodegradable electronics that dissolve in water, do not harm the plants and the species around them. But a lot of work that I do also is, is not just research. Sometimes I work with cultural centers to talk about what nature is. And a lot of this work is in botanical gardens and in uh, galleries, where I like people to engage with this work and question for themselves, what is nature? And why is it so separate from technology? Now, you might be wondering, why am I the person who's doing this work? I grew up in, in a state called Punjab in India, in the north of India. And every day, my grandfather used to take me a walk in the farms to look at the orange sun and to, to walk through the fields, to look at the water, to look at the land. My connection to land and water is what is taking me back into these technologies. And so a question that I keep asking myself, what can nature tell us that the technology alone cannot do for us. And I'll be showing you two examples that I talked about before. In 2016, I heard about this incident in Flint, Michigan in the US, where lead had leaked in a river. By the time the lead was detected, it had proven to be too late. There were fatalities. What do we see when we are near a river? We see plants and we see trees, but to me, they are the front line of detection of what we generally don't get to see with technologies. And so inspired by this, I developed carbon nanotube based sensors that we inject inside the leaves of a plant. When a plant absorbs water, it also absorbs impurities. When those impurities come in contact with these sensors, these carbon nanotube based sensors produce a glow or they turn off that glow to let you know that there is toxicity in water, in this case, lead. Imagine watering your house plant just as you do normally with your plants and it being able to tell you that the water in your homes or the water in your schools is not fit for drinking. We think of technology as, as something passive, we think of nature as passive, but you know, there's so much more to it and, and this is the, the thinking that we need. Let's move to the second project. I would like you to close your eyes and listen to this sound. Okay, what do you think is this sound? Rain. Rain. Frying oil. Frying oil. This is what I think as well, usually. This is the sound of underwater macroalgae in the oceans. 
right before the photosynthesis bubbles are released. When the bubbles are being formed on these filaments, right before they leave, they produce a ringing sound. And the sound that you hear is the cackling of millions of bubbles together. In 2021, I was at Lake Anza in Berkeley, and there was a sign that said, do not swim. And then I saw someone swimming next to that sign. And, and I thought this is the perfect place to record what I just showed to you as well. And the bubble recordings that I showed to you, you know, this is how they look like. We analyze the bubbles. They are audible, but the technology makes it more audible for us to be able to listen in these digital worlds. And, and so I recorded all across the Bay Area, San Francisco Pier, Sausalito, Point Reyes, um, all of these areas. The algae sounds different at 8 a.m., 2 p.m., 8 p.m. Why does that matter? We even did this in indoor aquariums. But why does this matter? When we do farming, we need to know what is happening in those farms to be able to make the decisions. Most of the marine proposed carbon dioxide removal techniques today do not have a way to quantify any of the removal that is happening. And, and there are manual techniques where you send a ship and you wait for the results to come back. But knowing such sound signatures at different points of the day in real time can help us identify just-in-time interventions. And with all of this work that I've shown, the message remains the same. Instead of taking technology more and more away from the environment, we need to bring it closer and help us understand our own relations to nature better. And if you would like to collaborate on this research, I'm, I'm always open to hear more ideas and would love to hear from you as well. Thank you so much.